Well, where to start if you want to get involved? First of all, you should start by formulating individual goals because for all the different types of worker representatives and the trade unions, it is important to find your own position. These are, of course, country specific. They are level specific, meaning if you're operating at a local, national or European level and they are company specific. When trying to formulate those individual goals, you should start with an analysis of your own initial situation, of course. This means looking at which dialogue partners you have, for example, in top management, HR department, CSR department, etc. Which dialogue channels you have, formal and informal. This is important because sometimes you forget about the informal dialogue channels that exist already. Look at the rights deriving from EU national legislation, from co-determination, formal and supporting rights. Resources, meaning power, information, expertise, external support, etc. And provided in the following, the different typologies for different types of works councils within companies can be helpful to look at to make the best choice for where you want to go. Because after you have looked at where you start, you should formulate if and where you want to move in one of those points and how working with non-financial information reporting can help you in getting there. A useful definition of power resources has been developed by Thorsten Müller and Hans Wolfgang Platzer in their publication The European Trade Union Federation's Profiles and Power Resources. I will not go into details too much here because you can find the whole publication on the website of the ETUE freely accessible if you want to learn more about it. I just want to quickly point out the most important things about it. It's basically about four different types of powers that organizations or councils can have. It's economic structural power deriving from the position in the labor market and production process. It's organizational power um, building up by membership strength, stability and vitality of union organization. Institutional power, meaning the influence in institutional arrangements and communicative power, meaning the ability to take part in public discourses, to shape public opinion and forge alliances with other actors from civil society. All those are interconnected with each other and as I said before, if you want to learn more about it, please go ahead and look it up in the original publication. These different kind of power resources are important to keep in mind when looking at the typologies which we have provided in the presentation. On the one axis you find the weak versus strong, while on the other axis you find the confrontative versus cooperative style. Both has something to do with power resources because depending on your organizational degree of the trade union membership within the company, you might have a weaker or a stronger position. And also depending on the national legislation or how you are actually embedded in processes, you might act more confrontative or more cooperative towards management. In the upper left corner of this typology, you find the strong confrontative council. Um, in this example, you could think about using the non-financial information reporting for an inquiry of management based on a social partner audit that you have carried out and the publication of results and using it in campaigning. You have a strong organizational base, but you have very little means to actually get in a cooperative process with management because there is, for example, no co-determination or you're not so much involved in drafting policies together with the management. On the upper right corner opposing this, you have the strong cooperative council. One example could be to draft up together with the management a company agreement on involvement in drafting non-financial reports and consultation process, meaning you get recognized and you get involved in the process. 
and for example to negotiate budget for external expertise to support your social partner audit. On the lower left side you find the weak confrontative type meaning that for example one option would be the publication of results from social partner audits and using it for campaigning with workforce and public. The difference there to the strong confrontative is that you have no means for inquiry of management or to use official company channels or dialogue channels to do so. On the lower right side you find the weak cooperative council which means that for example you could draft company agreements on information and consultation process before outside publication of the non-financial information re report. I hope this shows you how you should think about your own position in the company thinking about are we in a strong position, are we in a weak position, do we usually or do we want to be confrontative or do we want to try to cooperate. This of course has something to do with national and company culture but can also depend on different personal relations. So what are the prerequisites for different use cases? Of course, first thing is always knowledge about the subject matter of non-financial information reporting. Second is the knowledge about the processes in non-financial information reporting. And after this, a clear definition of the aspired role. This could be, for example, to be an uninvolved critic this could be also the explicit recognition as a stakeholder or even the active involvement. The highest yield would be then the detailed analysis of parts from non-financial information reporting, but this is obviously building up on each other. You cannot start with a detailed analysis without knowledge about subject matter and you should clearly have defined your aspired role before you start with this analysis because depending on the role that you want to take you might choose one or another way in the analysis. When talking about the potential practical value of non-financial information reporting there are both strategic and practical implications. Let's start by looking at the reporting process. Generally, it can be said that an early involvement at this stage that we are at right now in the year 2019 can have a higher impact, long-term impact on non-financial information reporting. Why is that? The topic is relatively new to companies and in the first years they will have a steep learning curve. So getting involved there, you actually shape the reporting process of the companies permanently, therefore improving the non-financial information reporting quality over a longer period of time. I have already said this, improving the NFIR quality also means that quality of the reports may not be satisfying at this point in time. This is because non-financial information data might not be precise and rich. Why am I pointing this out? This means that there might not be an immediate benefit or not such a big immediate benefit on the information side. Just to be realistic about this is important when calculating resources and benefits. What is the goal at this point, the strategic goal? Recognition as a well-informed stakeholder, management knows that you understand what's happening and that you're watching. So they might be willing to get in dialogue with you in order to avoid a situation where there you catch them making a mistake and rubbing it in. So next let's look at the practical implications for the reporting process. First of all, you will have to define your own desired role and for this it is necessary to build at least basic capacities in the particular reporting framework that is employed by the company that you want to look at. In this you should focus on the materiality assessment and the stakeholder involvement because those are the two most important concepts when you want to get involved and understand the process.
you should then start by, once you are acquainted with the process, um, assess the consistency of the report from an insider perspective. Is the information provided consistent in itself and is the information provided consistent with what you have experienced at the company level.